So I feel like a total noob. Uh, I've, I, this is the third time I'm recording this and I'm not even kidding. It's, it's going to be about a 10-15 minute video, maybe a little bit longer because I want to go into a lot of detail. It's all about weak auras. We're going to make a weak aura together which uh, a guy in the comments wanted to know how to sort of track uh, Earth Shield. Obviously you know I don't play Shaman, I'm a Druid, but he specifically was looking for one where he can see how many charges of Earth Shield there are and who it's on. So that's what we're going to use as sort of our, our dummy weak aura that we're going to actually make. But I'm going to start with the very basics of where you get it and where you can download weak auras that are already done for you because hands in the air, I didn't make mine from scratch. I found some good weak auras on the website that I'm going to show you and then obviously I downloaded them, put them, put them in game and then started looking at what I would change and you know made some adjustments for it to suit me basically. Which I would, I would encourage you all to do the same unless you're looking for something that's quite basic and then by the time you finish this video you'll absolutely be able to make it yourself. So firstly, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you like. It really helps more than you know. So hit that like button now. Uh, obviously, make sure you subscribe for more future content around TBC and just gaming in general. Let's have a look about weak auras and where... Let's start with where you're going to get it. All right, guys, so firstly, downloading it. Fairly straightforward. Doesn't matter whether you use Wow Up, Curse Forge, whatever you use. It's going to be easy to find. So look, it's number three with 104.8 million downloads. So odds are you've probably got it already. But yeah, so you get you can get it from Curse Forge. Obviously, you can use the Curse Forge app, the Wow Up app, whatever, wherever you want to get it from. But basically, you want to download weak auras, get the well burning crusade classic version get it installed put it into your interface slash add-ons folder um, or as I say, just use the Curse Forge app. But once you've got it, you'll want to then go on to this website, so wago.io. So this is the best place to start. If you don't know how to make weak auras, then this is where you can at least find some. And, and it's very easy to bring into the game. So I'll show you. So first of all, let's go to TBC. Been on a Shaman at the moment. So what we'll do, you can obviously go wherever you want here, but we're going to look for a Restoration Shaman sort of UI, weak aura UI, whole, whole sort of package. So if we was to sort of, we can go by best match, if we want to go by best match filter it but we'll go by stars so if we look at by stars and then we'll just get a top one just for you know for the sake of just showing you how you physically pull these weak auras into the game and it's this easy you literally just click on this icon at the top here where it says copy tbc weak aura import string so just press on that import strings copied as you can see and then if we go into game on the shaman no nope, that's my druid we'll go into game on the shaman there we go um, and then all we'll do is just type slash w a to bring up this screen. Now, you've got a few things at the top here. So new aura, import, we're not bothered about anything else. All we're bothered about is new new aura and import. So for this case, we're gonna to go to import and then we're just gonna paste. That's it, that's it done. You've brought all of these into the game now. So if we look, this is what we're about to import. So always have a quick read of this just in case, you know, you're not happy with what you're actually getting, but you can see that you're gonna get a group and in this group, you're gonna have earth totem, fire totem, water totem, you know, you're gonna have all of these things. So what we can do here is just import that and now we've got a nice, you know, straight away, look at that, just in no time at all, we've got a nice cast bar, you know, our mana bar, we, we can track our totems, we can track our water shield, our earth shock, you know, all of that literally brought into the game instantly, you know, and literally will just transform the way your, you know, UI can look. So if we pop, you know, Earthbind down, we can see that Earthbind's got 43 seconds um, alive. I mean, I'll be honest with you, if I was playing a Shaman seriously, you know, I would probably use something like this. It looks really nice straight away. But that's all well and good. So you know where to download Weak Auras itself, and you know now where to find them. So wago.io. But, you know, there's tons and tons of different things that you can just look about and find. As I say, this is where I found the uh, Tier 4 and the Dungeon and Heroic ones that had already been done, which we spoke about yesterday. So if you haven't seen that video already, please go check it out. It's it's all about just basically importing the, the Tier 4 Assistant Weak Auras, is what I would call them. Okay, so now you know where you're going to get it and how you're going to sort of set it up, you know, as in how you're going to import things into the game. Now I want to get a bit more into the detail on how we create these weak auras. So as I say, we're going to do the weak, the, the weak aura for the Resto Shaman, for the Earth Shield that I mentioned at the start of the video, and then we'll see how that unfolds. And I'll show you a couple more examples of things that you can do, how you can track cooldowns, trinkets, uh, even, even timers for like, well, not necessarily timers, but an alert. So let's say you're a healer with a nature 
swiftness, so you could be a druid or a shaman, you've got that big, quick, instant, big heal. Maybe you want an audible alert when your main tank drops below 30% health. So you can just press one button, which is your macro, to target the tank, nature swiftness, big heal on him to top him off. But you know, you don't want to be constantly watching like, oh, shall I use it now? You just want that audible alert. So you might hear a foghorn or something like that go off, and then you know, bang, quick, press that button, save the tank. It's things like that that really make or break a, a fight. You know, it could cause a wipe if you like you're trying to target the tank and you go, oh, there he is, uh, nature swiftness, healing touch. Oh wait, he's dead. You know, it literally, it, it, that could happen. So, you know, you can use weak auras for things like that, and I use it for audible purposes, more so than anything else. But if you know, or you've watched me play, or stream, or anything like that over on twitch.tv slash scottyj87, by the way, then you know I use Here Kitty, and I like to play with sounds. So, I, you know, I know when things are coming without me having to physically look. So, anyway, let's jump in and let's start making some weak auras. As I said at the start, we've got a, a shaman who wants to be able to track his earth shield and who it's on so we want to know how many stacks there are and who it's on so if we just open weak auras and what we'll do is we'll go to new aura at the top here and we'll create an icon and we'll call it earth shield funny enough should have done a capital e but it doesn't really matter now straight away it will put you on the display tab but we want to do the display tab last and it will make more sense as we go through but as i say our basic goals here is an earth shield tracker where we can see if it's on someone who it's on and how many stacks it's got left. So what we want to go to first is trigger. So the best way I can describe trigger is basically it's looking for either one or multiple sort of conditions to become true. So what I mean by that is we're going to look for is there anybody in our party or our raid that have got earth shield? If there is, is it my earth shield? So the earth shield that I've casted. If that's true, then what I want to see is who's got it and how many stacks it's got. That's the basic sort of breakdown step by step of what we need to create. So first of all, we're going to make a trigger. The trigger type is going to be aura, but there's lots of other sort of events, comp custom, combat log, spell, player unit info. We're going to use a couple of these in a little bit, a little bit later on in the video where I'll show you other things that you can do with things that are not just auras. But we're going to be looking for an aura. We're going to be looking for this specific aura in the party first, and we're looking for a buff because Earth Shield is classed as a buff. And then we're looking, obviously, aura name. The name we're looking for is Earth Shield. And then if we hit OK there, it will show the icon. So it's showing six different versions of Earth Shield. So that's going to be different ranks. It could be something an NPC does as well, you know, if there's a particular sort of Shaman NPC out there. But it doesn't matter. As long as it's tracking Earth Shield, that's absolutely fine. But like I said, what we want it to do is only show our earth shield so there's lots of other options here that you can do stealable you know is it a boss debuff blah 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 blah. but what we want to look at is own only so only match auras cast by the player or his pet you are the player so where this says party if you set this to player it will only look at you you are the player so but we're going to set it to party because when we set it to party you are a member of your party so it will look at you as well. So I'll show you what this has done straight away. So if we move this just down here, sort of out of the way, we'll close that. Now you can see I've got six charges of Earth Shield on me. It's showing six there. If I get rid of that, it goes blank. So because there's no charge number there, we know it's not available. Uh, you know, when I say available, it's not on someone. But what we'll do is we'll make this text a little bit bigger. So this is when we come into the display tab and then we go to text and this says percentage S which is basically going to be showing stacks. So percentage S is stacks. But what we want to do, we just want to make that bigger so it's really prevalent. We know when it's on someone or when it's not on someone. So now we know that's not on anyone. If I buff it on myself, we now know it is on someone because we've got six stacks there. But we also wanted it to show who it's on. So if I party up with my druid quickly, and what we also need to do while I'm thinking about it is if we was to if I was to put this on the druid now in a party, but then I was to convert to convert this to a raid, and then put this uh, oh, I keep going into the wrong screen, and then put the druid in group two, it now won't see it. Can you see the numbers gone? So the number down here is now gone because it's only looking and now it's back because it's only looking in my party. So we've got it set to party, but. So now if I come out, you can see, obviously, yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's on me or it's on the druid, it will show six. But now, if we want it to work in a raid as well, we're going to get to that. But for now, we'll stick with party because basically we're going to duplicate the aura and we're going to have um, a, a sort of load condition set. 
So this is this this one in particular. We just want to load when we're in a raid. Sorry, no, it's party. Uh, we want it. We want it to load when we're just in a group. If I now convert this to a raid, you'll see that it's gone. If I can, as in, you know, the icon's gone completely. And then if we can convert this to a party, it comes back, right? So we're going to have one that loads in a party, one that loads in a raid. So if we now go to Earth Shield, the thing that we're missing at the moment is we can't see who it's on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to display, uh, where we went to text and we made this text bigger. All we're going to do is just duplicate text one for now. So text one, uh, we, we now have, we can just make that smaller. Uh, and we're going to focus on text two. Now what we want to do here, and this will make sense in a second because I, I for some reason can't bring the name up and move it at the same time. But what we actually want to do is percentage one dot unit capital N for name. So unit name. Now. Like I say, if I come off of this, it shows Scotty because Scotty's got it on. But when I'm in the week or a screen, I can't see it. So what I actually do for now is just type Scotty. So that's the text that we want to display and then position it. Let's make it a decent size. Um, and then we'll just position it where we want it, which we'll say we want it just above, you know, the week or itself or maybe just overlapping it, uh, overlapping it a touch might, you know, might look good. I don't know. Just however you want it. Uh, let's move that back a t oh god let's move that back a touch there we go um, and now now we'll rename the display text to percentage one dot unit capital n name now when we come off we can see scott has got it if i put it on myself we can see that i've got it um, you might want to change, you know, play about with a text setting, make it a little bit smaller, bigger, you know, however you want it. But basically, you can now see quite clearly. I, re I really don't like how that looks. Sorry, I need to firstly make it a bit smaller, um, and let's put it underneath. I think it will look better under the nameplate, uh, under the icon. There we go. I'll probably be happy over that. So now we go percentage one dot unit name. There we go. So now it will show the name of whoever's got it on them and how many charges it's got. So if I put it on Scotty, Scotty's got it on, six charges. That's it, that's pretty much done. We've set out what we what we achieved to do. We've got a tracker, which is showing when Earthshield's on someone, how many stacks it's got and who it's on. You know, as easy as that. So next, this is only gonna work in a party, remember. So if we convert this to a raid, it goes. And we want it back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, it, get our Earthshield that we've done, we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna duplicate it. Once it's duplicated it, we could call it raid. So Earthshield raid. Now we need to go into load and then go to in group and change this to raid. So now it will activate when we're in a raid. But also we want to go to trigger and we want to change the trigger, which we set up at the start to actually show our own buff and who it's on from party to raid. And that's it. Now it will work in a raid. If we can, we can convert this from party to raid and, and it stays there, you know, and if we leave the party and we're on our own, it goes because we're not in a party. We're not in a raid. You probably don't want to see it. Or if you do want to see it, then you just duplicate it again and set it to self. So you could do, you could just duplicate it again, um, have it, you know, set this one to self. If this is what you want to do, you, you probably don't want to see it when you're on your own. And then you can have it load, not in a group. Probably the easiest way, you know, do it when not in a group and have the trigger as player. So it just shows you and now you've got it back again. But it won't show if you put it on anyone else outside of your group now. Obviously, it won't show it because they're not in your group. They're not in your raid and you've, you've only got it set to, set to self. But that's how you'd make a basic sort of tracker for your earth shield so now let me show you another basic one we'll go on the druid and let's just uh let's say you want to track a cooldown so let's say you've got a, a nice big personal cooldown that you like to use could be a dps cooldown icy veins i don't know whatever you want so uh for me i haven't got one but we'll use hurricane as an example so if we go to new aura and we create an icon Again, we'll skip straight over display because we don't need to see display at the moment. We're just interested in trigger. So what are we wanting the trigger to be? What type of trigger is it? If we're trying to track a spell, then it's going to be spell. Uh, and then what we're trying to what we're trying to track, obviously, is hurricane. So if we put hurricane in, it now shows the icon. We can put this icon wherever we want. Uh, and what do we want to see? So we want to know you know remaining time do we do we want it to show when there's a specific amount of time left obviously all of this would be entirely up to you for me personally let's just go to display and then here when we go to our text settings again at the moment it's set to stack still we don't want to see stacks we want to see progress 
because we want to see the progress of the cooldown, how long's left, and then we can make that text nice and big if we want. You can play around with, around with the font or you know whatever you want to do here. This is entirely your options, you know, to, to customize it to make it look as good as you want or as bad as you want. So now we will then go to so we've got our timer. It's showing what we want it to show, and that's basically it. We can now just close it down, and when we use Hurricane. Again, we, you can mess about with the aesthetics, but it shows that it's on cooldown. So now, obviously, you can see down the bottom here, I've already got all my weak aura set up, but you know, we've literally just made a timer, a cooldown timer for an ability in 10 seconds. You know, it's that easy. And then you can just duplicate it and change the ability name, set loads of cooldowns, you know, so you can see them all, adjust them, wherever, put them wherever you want on your bars and all of that. You can get into a bit more detail and making uh, sort of a dynamic groups, so groups that will move. So you could put like 10 different cooldowns in a dynamic group and then as each one comes off cooldown or as each one's got a shorter cooldown than the others, that will move along the progress bar. But there, I'm not going to go into that amount of detail today. You can look at that. It's If you know how to make the icons and the bars and things like that, then you'll, you'll be able to work out how to put them in a dynamic group, basically. So then other useful things. Let's talk about other useful things. So if we go back onto this and let's say... I, I can't remember if I mentioned it earlier or if I mentioned it in one of the two takes that I've tried to record this video already for without having a microphone turned on. Uh, forget that. Um, so let's say you've got a Nature Swiftness healing touch or a Nature Swiftness healing wave, whatever, and you want to know when the tank's low on health, but you don't want to be staring at his bar. What you could do here is let's go to trigger and let's change the trigger to player slash unit info. And then we're going to look at the, the health but we're going to look at the health of your maybe target. Maybe you're keeping him targeted, or we can do a specific unit. And you could type your tank's name in if, if you wanted to. So we're looking at Tonks, a specific unit, and we want to know when his health is less than or equal to 25%. So, oh, I put a percent. You don't need a percent, it's automatically a percent. So we want to know when it's great at less than or equal to 25%. But we don't want like something to flash up on the screen really. So you could either have an icon come on at the same time, or you could have a sound play. So you could have it play a big Batman punch as loud as possible when the tank hits 25% health or any, any of these sounds, you know. So you know then, you know oh, I, need, I need to just heal the tank because you know he's less than 25%, but even better, you might have a macro set up you know, slash target tonks, slash cast nature swiftness, slash cast healing touch, max rank, and you just press it every time you hear that sound. You go bang, instant heal. You know, it can be the difference between a wipe and a kill, you know, keeping your tank alive in those clutch moments. So there's a lot of powerful things you can do with weak auras. It's just playing around and working out what the best way to, to do that is. And just on that, when, we, when we're talking about a health you know, looking at a target's health and stuff. What I would do personally is have it as a text warning because then when you go to, to display, you can type whatever text you want. You know, heal the tank now. You could put like that and then you could make that bigger. Uh, if we, oh, hang on, heal the tank now and then accept that, made it bigger. We could put it there and then we could give that some animations. So, you know, we, when it starts, we could have it, I don't know, slide from the bottom and then we could have it shaking. You know, so you know, quick, I need to heal the tank, you know, but then you could also put the sound there at the same time, you know, when it shows. So you're going to put it on show of that text. You'll have the Batman punch come through master and boom, you know, quick, I need to heal him. You know, it, it, there's so much you can do, but that's going to be for you to figure out exactly what you want. Obviously, I just wanted to show you the basics, where you get it, how you use it, all of that sort of thing. And I hope you found this useful. All right, guys, so I hope you found that useful. As I say, if you did, please make sure you like, subscribe, uh, ring the bell for notifications. It really does help out. Now, I was going to put chapters in here, but I feel like you need to watch it from start to finish because if you was to just jump in at how to make the Resto Shaman at Week Aura, you wouldn't know where to get it. You wouldn't know that you could probably find something similar on that website already. So I had to leave it as just like one full video. I do try and add chapters now and again if I think it's worthwhile, but in this particular video, I didn't. So again, guys, thank you so much for all the support and I will see you on the next one.
Just wanted to take this moment just to say thank you to all those guys up there that have joined the channel as a member. So that's as a supporter or as a legendary supporter. It really does help the channel just continue growing, keep me in this seat, pumping out TBC content, Ashes of Creation soon, and obviously whatever else comes up between now and then. Also, if you want to give me some extra support, then check out my second channel, Safe Sounds, which is DMCA-free, copyright-free music for content creators. So be that Twitch streamers, TikTok creators, YouTube content creators, anything, anywhere you need background music, copyright free, lo-fi, drill, R&B, hip hop, you name it, it's going to be on there. So if you want to check that out, links in the description below, please go over and subscribe, it really helps out. And thank you again, all you guys up there and everybody that subscribes to the channel. Peace out.